Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about muscles of the elbow. Let's not waste any your time. Let's get right to it. So this is uh, this is kind of where we ended up. Uh, let me back up. In this video, uh, in this particular scene, we're going to be looking at the, the the location, probably kind of where we ended up in the previous video, talking about primary movers, the synergist, uh, the antagonist, uh, fixators, that kind of stuff. But what we want to do is is uh, as we're talking about these various sections, elbow. Uh, upper torso, arm, legs, hip, you know, wherever. We want to we want to have it, we want to think about it in these terms as far as who's doing the work, who's helping, okay? Who's the uh, resistance which is also helping us, okay? It isn't resistance like uh, it's keeping it from not getting the job done. It's actually helping uh, to make it a smooth motion, smooth movement uh, on the back side. So we're also going to be looking at, you know, intrinsic, extrinsic muscles, uh, which kind of lead into the uh, who's the primary, who's helping uh, kind of mindset. Uh, but just looking at uh, all the different areas or angles of the way to uh, appreciate or understand uh, muscles that are in, that are getting a job done. Okay, so one thing that'll help us with this is understanding intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. Uh, and the prefixes are a big help here. Intrinsic are also going to be muscles that are within a certain area. Like, for example, your hand. Uh, your hand, when you open and close your hand. Let me get in the camera here. When you open and close your hand, obviously these muscles are, are doing the primary work. Those are intrinsic muscles. Uh, but there's extrinsic muscles or muscles that are being synergist as well because if you take your your hand and I keep getting out of the camera and just try to move your fingers individually but look at your forearm you can see the muscles that are moving there uh, to get that so the muscles that you can see moving those would be extrinsic okay but they're also synergist so if I want to I'm going to reach over here and pick up my gla my my uh, other glasses when I pick these up, I mean, I can physically see, uh, now I, mean, I know my muscles in the hand are working, oh, here we go, but I can also see the muscles in the forearm that are working, and if I, you know, turn my arm uh, around, again, you can see the muscles in the forearm, the extrinsic, but also the synergist muscles uh, working as well. So that's, that's going to be one of the ways that we think about uh, our work uh, here in this section. All right, so something else that we're going to pull from the past is back when we did the brain, uh, we talked about the cranial nerves, uh, the 1 through 10, I mean 1 through 12, and their various associations with the different parts of our bodies supplying the uh, not energy, that'd be the the ATP, but supply the, the uh, electricity to get that message sent that it needs to happen. So, for example, uh, cranial nerve one uh, supplied the resource or information for this particular uh, muscle. And, of course, that's called intervention of a muscle. And that refers to the nerve that stimulates it. So you see the word intervention. Um, it's talking about nerves that stimulate that particular one. And uh, that, that's a list that you've already worked with, were dealt with. That would have been back in, when we came back from Christmas break. Uh, that would be that part of it. So late, mid-January to late January is when you really got serious about studying those. Uh, and if you can't remember them directly, but just there's nothing wrong with that. Be sure to, that list will be out. Uh, on the table because we'll be that's one of the things we'll be talking about associating with it 
as we talk about various muscles and, and the different sections but that list will be out but you can also make sure you find can find yours and, and can use that as well But part of the, the whole process of understanding how muscles operate uh, kind of begins with knowing what, what uh, cranial nerve is intervening it or supplying the, the uh, stimulus for it. And of course, we remember how that worked with the posterior and anterior, the rames, the dorsals, the ventrals, uh, and the ganglion, and of course the plexus. Uh, we spent some time work learning about the plexus as well. Uh, so all those things are going to come into play in, in uh, this chapter as we learn about muscles. Now, this screen doesn't have any information about muscles, but it does have some r reminders of some good things that we have talked about in the past and that we'll bring up again. Looking at the next screen, I gotta make a quick little adjustment there that I missed during my looking it over. But the idea of, of really understanding what's going on and where things are and what they do is gonna be done not only in the in the dissections that, that we do, okay, but you can also look at uh, you know Google search images uh, of these muscles. You can watch um, if you have an interest in there's hundreds and thousands of YouTube videos of uh, cadaver work, cadaver dissections, uh, things like that. Uh, but the, one of the best things that you can do is just practice, you know, with your own muscles. Like what I did with my, you know, earlier, that what I did with my forearm or in hand when I was moving fingers and just watching, okay, the muscles, you can see the palm muscles moving and then you can see the muscles of the forearm, the uh, moving as well to understand how all that works and what's going on and you can't look at the names enough okay you can't say them enough you can't write them enough or too many times uh, and just recognizing as we talked about in the bones that a lot of times the names are associated with that muscle bone combination um, and so you'll kind of see those same suffixes and prefixes uh, working out but uh, just practicing it I mean practicing it practicing it practicing it and this is the the full diagram this is the picture that you already have and you have both the the blank versions and the filled in versions but this is the diagram that I that I alluded to at the very beginning of the first video that you would have the front and the back side, oh, excuse me, in a huge word list uh, to pull from, just a reminder and, and to help with the spelling. Um, but it's the idea of knowing where they, what the names of each of the muscles are and filling those in as, uh, as, as needed. So with that, that brings us to the end of Muscles to the Elbow. When we come, come back together next time, we're going to be talking about muscles that help with facial expression. We'll see you then.